quick podcast on independent events, dependent events, and conditional probability, and we'll do a couple of uh, examples on conditional probability. So, Mr. Rops, what's going on here? What's an independent, two independent events, what, what happens there? Well, two independent events means that one event does not affect the other event happening. So, so if the probability of A happens, and if it's some value, we know that it's going to be, if they're independent, the probability of a happening given that B has occurred will be the same. Okay, so let's uh, let's think of an example here. Let's say we got a coin. Yep. Right. Say the probability of two heads in a row, heads and a heads. That's what we want. So the event that the first, the event that there's a head, right, is a half, and the event that we get a second head is a half. Right. So, what's the event of two heads? It would be a half times a half. Times a half, because they're independent. So, I want a, half, I want a head the first time, and, and means times and probability, I want a half the second time, which of course is a fourth. That's independent. Right. Dependent is a little bit different. Dependent, the, the formula will say the probability of A times the probability of B given A happened given that A happened, whatever A was. So if I say, let's say we have like a, a bowl here with a couple red uh, M&Ms and a couple brown M&Ms. I always like green, but... Green, okay. Let's throw a green one in there too. We won't use it. Okay, so what's the probability I pick two reds in a row and I eat the first red so it doesn't go back in there? Well, at least if you right. did, it wouldn't wouldn't be very good. Right. <laughs> so the probability of picking the first red is going to be one out of six. Three out of six. Oh, you're right. There's three out of six there. Three I can't six. count. I'm looking at the green. No, no. He meant, to do the green. he meant to do that. <laughs> three out of six. The probability of a red, two reds, one red is three out of six. And then the second red, well, I only have five candies left. And one of them is red gone, so there's two left. Out of two. So you can see there that there's not really, this is the formula for dependent, but you can't really be sure uh, of what the probability of B is because it might, it affects what happened here in this first right. situation. So that's dependent events. You see the multiply, it's still there. Probably the A and B is still there, but it's the effect that uh, A could have affected B, right? Right. Okay, so now conditional is a little bit of a twist on that. So if we take our formula, probability of A times the probability of B given A equals the probability of A and B, and we divide by probability of A, so we get something like this, probability of A and B over probability of A, the conditional probability is usually solving for this. What's the probability of B given that A happened? And you just need these two bits of information. What's the probability of both of them happening? Divide the sample set of just A. A happening, yep. A. So this is our formula that we're working with. So let's run through two examples, Mr. Rops. Okay. First one with Venn diagrams. Okay, so we've got 30 students, 19 in physics, 17 in chemistry, and 15 in both. So we filled the Venn diagram. Okay, so yeah. So in the middle there is going to be 15, that's 15. both. So let's say that this one is the physics and this one is the chemistry. So if I have 15 taken already, physics, I should have four right here. Right. And then this part right here? Uh, two left. Two. And then does that take care of everything? We have 30 in total. Six, 15 is 21. Plus we got five on the outside, so four more is 25, so there's going to be 30 in total, so five on the outside, they're taking neither physics or chemistry. Is that right? Did you do that right? No. Uh, oh, no, no. Nine. It's nine. It's a nine. Uh, where's my eraser? There. So, so four plus... Four left. No, how many left? Nine? Yeah, four I plus 15 count. is 19, plus two is 21, is 20. So I'm supposed to be here to make sure you don't make any mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> He's, I told him to make some mistakes so we can have a little bit more of an interesting conversation. All right. So probability of a student taking both subjects. So that's probability of both would be uh, 15 out of 30 kids. So about a half. Well, exactly half. Right. Probability of physics, but not chemistry. So physics, 
but not chemistry. So there's only four people that are taking only physics, and out of the 30 people. Right. All right. Now here's the here's the uh, the the conditional part. The chemistry given that a student studies physics. Okay. Well, let's look back at our formula here. Given they study physics, so. That's the given part right here, right. probability of A. So what's the denominator, Mr. Rob? It's going to be the probability of, or the number of uh, given the physics people. So that is... So given physics. Do we need the probability piece? Given no, physics. we just need the, the number. We're okay. going to total so, kind of thing. So there's 15 that are ta or 19 that are taking physics. So our sample space is only the physics people. So the sample space changes. It's only the people in A. So in this case, only the people in P. Right. Given they study physics, physics. what's well, probably they study chemistry? Right. There's, there's 15, 15 of them. Well, there's 19 that are taking physics, 15 that are taking both. So it's important to understand that it's just, you're changing the sample space from 30 to, to whatever the situation is. Now, you can see that we used actual values here, but we can also use probabilities. Should we run through the probabilities to make sure they show them the same? Sure. So 19 out of 30 would have been the probability of physics, and then this one would have been 15 out of 30 for both right. physics and chemistry. And you can see that that's the same thing. Right, the 30 just cancel away. All right, so this is a tree diagram, I think. Urn A contains two red, so red, red, uh, blue, blue, blue. And then urn B is four red, 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 red. And one, one blue. blue. Determine the probability that we pick a red one. Oh, what's happened? Oh, so we have a coin. a coin first. All right. Take so, some marble from that urn. So we'll go. I always like to put the event on the end of the branch. So A or B. Okay. Or A or B. Uh, so that's a half or a half that I'm going to either A or B. Now, determine that the probably that it is red. Let me go lowercase here. Uh, right, blue and B, gotcha. Yeah, and I'll just do lowercase there for consistency. Okay, so then if I'm going to earn A, then I've either got a red or a blue. Right. And the probability of a red is 2 out of 5. And of course, this is 3 out of 5. Right. What's this one? 4 out of 5. 4 out of 5. And then 1 out of 5 for blue. 1 out of 5. Okay, so question A. What well, determine the probability of a red? Okay, so if... If I'm in this situation, urn A, then I go into red this way. So that's, I need to get urn A and a red. And means multiply. Or it could have happened where I went to urn B and a red. Does that make sense, Mr. Ross? Yep, so there's two branches on the tree that you can follow to get a red. There's B to red or A to, a, a to red. This way or this way. Okay, and means multiply A and red or a, B and red. Okay? Okay. So what does it simplify to? Uh, I got one fifth plus six two fifths. Tenths. Right? Yep. Equals three fifths. Three fifths. Okay. Part B. Given the marble is red. So the given. We already did that in part A. And the IB is very good about this. They usually ask you in part A what the red is, and then they say given that in, in uh, part B. It's, it's very nice so about that. So setting you up for it. Okay, so given red, what's the probability it came from B? Well, it came from B, we need the and. So it's a red and B, B and red. So that's one half times four fifths equals four tenths over three fifths which is 4 tenths times 5 thirds. Get some cancelage here. It's 2 thirds when we're done, I think. We get 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds. Does that help you in your, your, your problems, Mr. Rob? <laughs> it does, very, very <laughs> much. I, I, I'm helping to learn how to count a little, uh, a little bit. Yeah, okay. One, two. Hopefully that helps.